My name's Derek, we're standing in Kitsilano in Vancouver, and today we're gonna to talk about the formation of BC, the North Shore Mountains, and glaciers. So we're standing here in Kitsilano in Vancouver. In behind me are the Coast Mountains, and these mountains were formed way off the coast of British Columbia millions of years ago, hundreds of millions of years ago, deep in magma chambers under volcanoes. These rocks with plate tectonics were on a collision course with North America. When they collided, they were pushed up to form these massive mountains. So the mountains behind me, the Coast Mountains here, were formed millions and millions of years ago, but they were shaped a lot by glaciers that came through this area 25 to 10,000 years ago. These glaciers would have started in the mountains and flowed down into the lower mainland and right across Vancouver Island out into the ocean. And these glaciers are powerful agents of change in the mountains. They sculpt the valleys and they shape the size of the mountains. And a lot of these valleys and mountains behind me here were shaped by this ice. So a glacier is a thick mass of ice that is moving under its own weight. The ice is so thick and heavy that it slowly deforms and moves downhill. When you look at a glacier, it doesn't look like it's moving, but if you look over time, they actually flow over months and years down valleys, and they can really cause a lot of change to the valleys and the mountains around them. So 10,000 years ago, this area would be totally unrecognizable uh, from what it looks like today. It probably looked more like Greenland. We had at least a thousand meters of ice over our heads and the glaciers were moving from the mountains right across Vancouver, out across Vancouver Island and into the ocean. And the weight of this, all this ice over our heads was so much that it pushed the Earth's crust down. Sort of like if you have a toy in the bathtub and you push on the top of it. But when the ice melted, it's like taking the pressure off that toy and the toy would bounce back up in the bathtub. But it, the bounce back happens pretty slowly. So in the meantime, the ocean would have flooded into this area and all of this that you see here would be underwater in the ocean. But the ice also carries with it all this dirt or what we call glacial sediment. And this sediment is full of big boulders and really small stuff like sand and clay as well. A lot of BC is covered in one or two meters of this glacial sediment. But in some areas, like in the interior of BC, there can be hundreds of meters of this sediment thick. But some of this ice is still with us today. In the coast mountains and some of the other mountain ranges around BC, we still have active glaciers that are flowing from mountains into valleys. You can go and see some of these for yourself. If you drive up to Whistler, for example, there's the Tantalus Range across Howe Sound. You can see some beautiful glaciers there. Uh, the Athabasca Glacier in the Rocky Mountains is another one that you can drive up to and walk and put your hand right on the ice itself. And so you can still experience some of this ice. But unfortunately, with the climate change that we're seeing around the world, some scientists think that this ice will only be around for another 50 to 100 years before it's all melted. Another way that we can tell that glaciers were in an area is to look at striations or scratches on the rock that the dirt in the ice leaves behind. You can have a look at these on polished surfaces, for example, near the chief in Squamish, and geologists can tell a lot about the glacier from these scratches. We can tell the direction it was moving, we can tell sometimes how thick and powerful the ice was, and all kinds of interesting information. Plate tectonics is really important for understanding where different deposits and rock types are around British Columbia. So understanding plate tectonics and the glacial history is really useful for us to be able to find new deposits and understand the mineral resources we have available to us in British Columbia. That's just a little taste of the history of glaciation and mineral resources here in British Columbia. 